Which is faster for gaming, Windows 10 or Windows 11? Now that's a question I've noticed a lot of you asking us on some of our recent CPU related videos. And I suppose fair enough, Windows 10 is still widely used today, making it as relevant as ever. And the last time I looked at Windows 10 performance was about three years ago now. So it has been a minute, but before we get to it, Today's video is sponsored by Gigabyte's excellent QD OLED gaming monitors. The Aorus FO32U2P is a flagship 32-inch 4K 240Hz model, the world's first to offer DisplayPort 2.1 UHBR20, along with the stunning image quality and motion clarity of OLED. The Aorus FO27Q3 packs a 27-inch 1440p 360Hz panel with lightning-fast response times and superb smoothness. Or you might be interested in the super ultra-wide Aorus CO49DQ with its 49 inch 5120 by 1440 panel at 144 Hz. All Aorus OLED monitors come with a great feature set including HDMI 2.1, a KVM switch, VRR and OLED care. These are fantastic monitors so to learn more about Gigabyte's QD OLED range check the link in the description below. Okay so for this update I'll be looking exclusively at gaming performance as I know that's what the vast majority of you are primarily interested in. The test setup for this one is fairly simple. Both operating systems have been freshly installed for each of the four hardware configurations and then we've installed the chipset drivers, display drivers and then of course the software for testing the 13 games that we will be benchmarking. The only modification made to the Windows install is to disable the core isolation feature on Windows 11, which enables memory integrity by default. Windows 10, on the other hand, turns memory integrity off by default. Now, the memory integrity feature can significantly reduce performance in some games, so I wanted to avoid that being a factor in our results. It's also worth noting that a lot of you who requested I create an updated comparison between Windows 10 and Windows 11 claimed that rolling back to Windows 10 provided a noticeable improvement in gaming performance. However, I suspect in many of those examples, the difference is simply due to Windows 11 running with memory integrity enabled, as this is the default option there, and as I said, Windows 10 disables this CPU taxing feature by default. Now, for those of you wondering, I did benchmark this security feature back on the Core i7-12700K in late 2021, as at the time I found Intel's Elder Lake CPUs to be more interesting than AMD's Zen 3 processors. Also, please note I don't necessarily recommend that you go and disable memory integrity if you're running Windows 11, though this is what I've personally done on my gaming system, but that's a risk I'm willing to take. It does use a lot of CPU resources, and given that I mostly play competitive shooters, the performance hit can be quite substantial. Anyway, I just wanted to quickly give that disclaimer, this is not a recommendation. Making this testing a lot easier, I used a pair of Team Group's Cardia A440 4TB SSDs with a fresh install of Windows 10 on one of them, and of course Windows 11 on the other, and this allowed me to seamlessly switch between the operating systems to verify settings and of course results. And this was quite fortunate as more than once I ran into some rather unexpected data, and we'll of course take a look at that in a moment. Just finally, I should note that for both operating systems, I downloaded the latest ISO version from Microsoft's website. So that meant Windows 10 2022 update version 22H2 and Windows 11 2023 update version 23H2. Okay, let's get into the data. Starting with Baldur's Gate 3, we find no performance difference between the two operating systems for either the AMD or Intel CPUs that I tested, so nothing to see here. The results found when testing with The Last of Us Part 1 are also very close, though Windows 10 was repeatedly a few frames faster in this example. That said, we're only talking about a 1-2% difference, so while the older operating system was faster here, the margin is certainly insignificant. Now, Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty cost me a lot of time on this content, as I had to reinstall and test each operating system two more times in an effort to try and work out what's going on here. For some reason, the 7800X 3D was substantially faster using Windows 10, boosting the average frame rate by 10%. Oddly though, despite that unexpectedly large increase for the 7800X 3D, the 7700X was just 3% faster. I then moved over to the Intel test system and found a 6% increase for the 14700K while using Windows 10, along with a 7% increase for the 12700K. 
Of course, I triple check stuff like quality settings along with the operating system and the hardware configuration, but I failed to understand why this game is generally showing a fairly large performance increase when running on Windows 10 opposed to Windows 11. Other newly released and highly demanding games such as Hogwarts Legacy provided results that are in line with what we found previously, and that is to say, there's no real performance difference between Windows 10 and Windows 11. And it's a similar story with ACC, though here the 7700X was consistently 3% faster on Windows 10, while the 7800X 3D was 2% faster. Not exactly large margins, but again, the older operating system did consistently provide slightly better results. The Spider-Man remaster results are very similar to those seen when testing with Hogwarts Legacy and The Last of Us Part 1, so that is to say there is no real performance difference between the two operating systems. Homeworld 3, on the other hand, did play better using Windows 10, boosting the performance of the 7800X 3D by 6%, and the 7700X by 4%. We also saw a 3-5% to improvement for the Intel CPUs when using Windows 10, so not quite the margin seen when testing with Cyberpunk 2077, but still noteworthy. A Plague Tale Requiem has more unexpected results for us, and again, after multiple clean installs of both operating systems, I was able to confirm that these results are accurate, at least for the hardware configurations tested. Again, it was the 7800X 3D that benefited the most when using Windows 10, seeing a 10% boost to the average frame rate, though oddly no change to the 1% lows. The 7700X on the other hand only saw a 5% boost, which is still statistically significant. Then for the Intel CPUs, we consistently saw a 3-4% performance improvement when using Windows 10. Counter-Strike 2 also played best on Windows 10, though this time the 7800X 3D was just 3% faster, while the 7700X was 10% faster. So a bit of a reversal there when compared to a Plague Tale Requiem and a Cyberpunk. But the point is, Windows 10 was consistently faster than Windows 11 in this title, and we found the same thing when testing the Intel processors. The 14700K was 11% faster, and the 12700K 7% faster when using the older operating system. Starfield provides us with another example where Windows 10 was faster, this time providing the 7800X 3D with a 4% boost, and the 7700X with a 2% boost. The Intel processors also saw similar gains, with a 4% improvement seen when using Windows 10. Horizon Forbidden West, though, saw no difference at all when comparing the two operating systems, so it's interesting to see how some games show a difference while others see little to nothing. And Hitman 3 also falls under the little to nothing heading, with up to a 1.5% difference between the two operating systems, so again, nothing to really see here. Then finally, we have Watch Dogs Legion, where we generally saw a few more frames when using Windows 10, but we're only talking about margins of up to 2%, so again, not much to see here. So there you have it, Windows 10 versus Windows 11 gaming performance using Intel's 12th and 14th gen core series processors, which I suppose also includes the 13th gen, since 14th gen is just a refresh of 13th gen, and then of course also AMD's Zen 4 processors. Now, of the 13 games that I tested, I was very surprised to find five of them displaying noticeable performance advantages in favor of Windows 10. And this is with VBS, or, you know, core isolation or memory integrity. It's with that security feature disabled for both operating systems. In the past, I've found both operating systems to deliver similar gaming performance. And if anything, it's generally been Windows 11 that offers the performance advantage. Of course, it has been years since I last tested this. And back then, games such as Starfield, uh, Homeworld 3, Counter-Strike 2 and Phantom Liberty, they were all yet to be released. Why these games performed better on Windows 10 in our testing is difficult to say. It is possible a recent Windows 11 updates to blame here, or maybe it could be something to do with a display driver issue. Not exactly sure, and realistically the list of possibilities that could have caused this is almost endless. But if you do upgrade, I found in past testing that you're generally far better off going with a fresh install rather than upgrading your existing operating system. A fresh Windows installation almost always results in better performance and can help avoid stability issues. So it's just best practice to go and start over again. And that is going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, do all that stuff. We have a lot of CPU testing coming up very shortly on the channel. In fact, you'll see one of those videos probably tomorrow. So if you're watching this as the video goes up, 
interesting CPU video the next day. Uh, but yeah, other than that, Floatplane Patreon, check that stuff out if you're interested to get access to our exclusive Discord server, monthly live streams, Q&As, and behind the scenes content. But if not, perfectly fine, and I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.